Ayurveda's take on human sexuality is one of the most misunderstood concepts. How to have healthy sex life as per Ayurveda? How often should we indulge in sex? Are there any natural contraceptives in Ayurveda? How to overcome problems like erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation? What are some of the precautions to be taken while planning a baby? To get an answer to all these questions, I deeply went through various Ayurvedic texts to bring out the most authentic information to you. Watching this video till the end, you will have a clear idea as to how you should go about your sexual life. So without any further delay, let's get started. Hello friends, welcome to FitTuber. Though India has a strong monastic tradition, the goal of the Vedas was certainly not to convert every human being into a sexless being in the name of spirituality. In fact, there have been many great sages and saints who were married with kids. Not everyone can practice nofap or brahmacharya as it is called and accordingly, Ayurvedic guidelines vary at different levels of person's consciousness. Celibacy was never forced upon but was always taken up voluntarily, although it was not mainstream. One of the most important Ayurvedic concepts regarding sex involves Shukra, a Sanskrit term that denotes not only reproductive fluids but is much more. It's the most potent energy that is present in every cell of the body since birth in the form of Ojas. Shukra is the last of the seven bodily tissues. While Shukra in our reproductive organs has the power to procreate a new life, its presence in the rest of the body is the basis for sexual attraction, beauty, enthusiasm, joy, health and creativity. Ayurveda's best practice practices are based on protecting this vital dhatu called Shukra which naturally decreases as we age. Ayurveda explains that in nature there is a time and season for sexuality and then there is time and season for rest. It is true for plants, it's practiced by animals and it should be practiced by us humans as well. Of course I realize that our human nature can be rather impulsive but understanding your body's natural pattern when it comes to sex can help you maintain balanced reproductive tissues and support your vital energy. Since most of us today are unaware of these natural rhythms and often indulge in sexual intercourse at all times, problems like fatigue, depression, infertility, premature ejaculation, erectile dysfunction, and difficult menopause are on the rise. So how often should we indulge in sexual activity? Ayurveda recognizes six seasons and it explicitly mentions the healthy frequency of sexual intercourse in each season. Basically, the cooling seasons are most suitable for sexual activity as this is the time kapha energy is the highest which naturally promotes the formation of Shukra Dhatu within our body. On the flip side, summer seasons and monsoon are most depleting for the body's natural reserve of Shukra. So according to Ayurveda, a person can indulge in sexual activity daily during the winter season provided he or she consumes Shukra-enhancing foods along which we will discuss later in this video. During summers and monsoon, sex is recommended only once in 15 days and in other seasons, it's suggested maximum once in 3 days. Ayurveda also specifically mentions what time of the day is best for sex. As we have learned, kapha is the major factor in deciding that. Every day 6 pm to 10 pm is dominated by kapha and this is the best time for sex. Sex during the day is most depleting. Second best time for sexual gratification is 6 am to 10 am in the morning. Ayurveda recommends sexual activity from the age 18 to 70. However, if you are planning for a baby, a minimum 25 years of age for men and 18 years for women is advised. This also goes with the concept of ashrama, the four stages of life as per scriptures. Can we have sex during periods? Ayurveda is firm, one should never have sex when the woman is menstruating as it can seriously disturb her doshic balance. Trying to conceive during this time may even have worse effects and should be strictly avoided. Ayurveda also advises to abstain from sex during special days like eclipses as it can disrupt the hormonal balance of the body. Moreover, Ayurveda does not recommend oral sex as it imbalances the vata dosha in the body. There are some best practices recommended by Ayurveda for optimum sexual health. First of all, sexual activity is not suitable immediately after eating. This is because the body needs blood flow for digestion which then gets compromised in the genitals. Even a modern medical doctor will advise you to take a two-hour break after a Meal. It is recommended for the man and woman to urinate after the intercourse. This is also in tune with the latest modern medical science research where it was found to significantly reduce the urinary tract infections. Ayurveda recommends having bath post-sex for hygiene and body rejuvenation. To reduce the loss of energy, Ayurveda recommends Nase Kriya after sex which simply means to put a couple of drops of a medicinal oil in each of your nostrils. In hot weather, Desi Cow Ghee is recommended while in colder months, Badam Rogal Oil 
drinking is best suited. Within 30 minutes of an orgasm, Ayurveda recommends drinking warm desi cow's milk with added jaggery powder. This is like a miracle food for Shukra. Sages predicted that when the body experiences depletion of the precious Shukra Dhatu, it immediately attempts to restore it if it has the right ingredients handy. That's where warm, sweetened milk is so useful. There are more Shukra enhancing foods that not only increase the quality of reproductive fluids in both men and women but also replenish them fast. Desi cow dairy products, especially fresh butter, ghee, curd, sweet and lassi, paneer and rice kheer are on top of the list. Sugarcane, its juice and other sweet fruits like ripe bananas, mangoes, lychees, dates and chikus are great. Jackfruit, ladyfingers, yams, pointed guards are highly aphrodisiacs. Soaked dry fruits are shukra enhancing too. Black urad lentil and chana are some pulses that highly enhance the sexual strength. If you are sexually active then it is recommended to have at least some of them in your daily diet. On the contrary, excessive sour foods, packaged foods, empty calories such as diet sodas, stimulants like tea, coffee, cigarettes and alcohol weaken the shukra dhatu. If you are looking to conceive, Ayurveda has clear guidelines for optimum health of the parents and the upcoming baby. Firstly, it is advised to maintain celibacy for at least two months before you plan to conceive. This will strengthen the potency of your shukra dhatu. It is suggested to plan for baby during the kapha dominated season like winters. Two months before conceiving, regular doses of classical Ayurveda Ayurvedic medicines like one tablet of Makar Dvajbati with milk are highly recommended to men. On the other hand, just one teaspoon of Shatavari powder in milk is sufficient for women's reproductive health. Both Ashtang Hridayam and Charak Samhita suggest that a woman when on her back while copulating is more likely to conceive than in any other position. Men are recommended to regularly self-massage and exercise their body for better sexual strength. Ayurveda doesn't perceive sexual intercourse as a mere fusion of bodily fluids. Even the purity of thought thoughts of the partners during intercourse is given utmost importance in shaping up the nature of upcoming life. It is also imperative that you do not compromise on your sleep as it's then when your body restores Shukra. Ayurveda puts out specific guidelines regarding sexual intercourse during a woman's pregnancy. Broadly, one should avoid sex three months before and three months after the childbirth for optimum health of the mother and the child. Well, what if you are not planning a baby? In that case, Ayurveda also offers natural contraceptives without any side effects. Neem is one of the most effective spermicides and is extensively used even in the modern times. Neem leaves when taken by women during their fertile period prevents the fusion of sperm and egg. Even applying neem oil at the lady parts 50 minutes before intercourse acts as a natural contraceptive. Neem fruit commonly referred to as nimoli is very strong natural contraceptive and should be taken after consulting an Ayurvedic practitioner. There are many more herbal concoctions which are used for birth control as mentioned in various Ayurvedic texts. So by following certain rules which are aligned with our inherent nature of bodies, we can protect ourselves from the unnecessary loss of Shukra. This is in essence the sexual wisdom of Ayurveda. Ashtang Hridayam puts it this way, from a disciplined indulgence in sex, one gains good memory, intelligence, health, nourishment, sharpness of sense organs, reputation, strength, and slow aging. And if you indulge in excess, you are bound to receive the opposite. That's why the word Sambhog, which in Sanskrit means sexual intercourse is so wisely coined. It means maintaining a balance of pleasure or sensual enjoyment. I hope you found this video helpful. If yes, then please give this video a big thumbs up. If you are looking for a post-workout drink that is protein-rich and plant-based, Oziva Superfood Plant Protein is one good option in the Indian market. It is a blend of pea protein isolate, brown rice protein isolate, moon bean protein isolate, along with added herbs like Tulsi, Amla, Trifla and Ashwagandha. What makes it stand out is that it is not artificially sweetened, rather it is naturally sweetened with stevia. More so, Uziva's superfood plant protein is free from preservatives and artificial colors. One scoop of it will give you 20 grams of protein, 0 grams of sugar and 15 multivitamins. Have one serving of it in water post-workout. It is recommended for both men and women. To buy Uziva's superfood plant protein, click on the link down in the description box. Do not forget to apply the special discount coupon to get Rs 150 off on your order. So friends, that's all for this video video, you can now support my work by clicking on the join button below. Please do remember to subscribe to my channel, hit that bell icon so that you never miss a video from me. You can also follow me on Instagram where I almost every Saturday at 11am do a Q&A session. My name is Vivek, I thank you so much for watching.